Hello, welcome to this updated version of the Absolute Beginners Blender tutorial number 10 that is about getting your corners and edges sharp while using the subsurface division modifier. We're using Blender 2.69. And here we have a cube, and if I add a subdivision surface modifier to it, it's going to crumple it up like that, and we can fix that. So what, what I use here for this is I'll use the Control R tool that puts in loops like that. So I roll the mouse wheel once. And before I go any further, I'll just click that so we have that. I would like to turn on the screencast keys first here. Make sure we get those displayed and uh, I want to increase the... the symbols a little bit. There you go. Okay, we're back here. Um, so these two edges here, these edge loops, I want to scale them out to, you know, pretty close to the edge of this here. So I'll just do S and Y because I'm scaling it in, in the Y axel and I'll just put it right there. And then I'll continue with the next dimension. I can use you know either one. I'll just do here. And then now I've moved it before I've I, I moved the mouse. So it's now it's not gonna be completely they're not if so if I use the scale tool, they will not come at the same place, so to speak, or they scale unevenly. So I'll use um, I'll use the edge and I'll just select one of them and I can just pull that down come up closer so we can see what's going on probably like that is even better so so you can do this either way the scale just makes it quicker easier and then we have uh, this dimension here. So I'll do no, control R. I want two of those and then left click so I fix them, fix them and then scale X and pull them out. So now when you look at this in object mode it looks um, you know sharp but it's it's not shaded smooth, so I'll go back to edit mode and select everything, and then choose shade smooth here. So if we render this, this is what we have. So now you've uh, um, you know made your edges, edges and corners sharp. I go back to edit mode and pre uh, press seven to look at this from the top, and go into orthogonal view. And I would like to make a circular, circular hole in this, so I do Control R, and then I'll move it so I get four lines. I'll do that again because now it's really important to get it evenly distributed. And then I do the same thing in this dimension here. So now I have a, a, a grid that I can. Um, delete some faces out of and I can use the control and left mouse to just select this here all these and I'll delete those delete the faces so now I have a hole in here and I can just select I'm, I'm selecting now at the other end because there's a hole so I can just select those and then I delete those faces and now I have uh, an opening here and what I want to do now is I want to put a circle here that fits perfectly into this hole here. And uh, the first thing I'll do is I uh, have to be in edge mode and I'll make sure I have selected this top one here. And then I do control S, no, sorry, shift S, sorry, uh, cursor to selected. So now if I press one and look at this from the side here, I can see my cursor is right up there at top and in the middle. So if I do shift A and the circle, I'll get the circle, but I want fewer edges on that or vertices on that. I want 12 because that's gonna work real well with uh, 
the number of edges I have here. Then I do R, Z, 15. So I rotate it 15 degrees around the Z axis. And then I scale it down so it you know, fits in my hole here. And then I have that opening with that circle in it. And then I select this loop and then I do W and um, bridge edge loops like that. So now I have this circular circular hole and we'll just do this again. I'll press shift seven to look at this from the bottom. And uh, so you can just follow with here, edge, and I'll select this edge loop here. Yeah, that's the one I want. Sorry, there you go from the bottom. And then I do sh shift S and cursor to selected. Press one to verify. Yeah, it's down there at the bottom, right where I want it. And um, then I do again, shift A, circle. And now it's already set to 12 and I can actually just type R15. I don't have to specify the Z axis that I'm rotating around. And then since I already have my my other ring, since I'm in an orthogonal view, if I go to perspective, I, I won't be able to gauge exactly what is going to, uh, how, how I should scale it. But in orthogonal view, I can scale it So it's covered right at on top of that. Uh, and then I'll do the same thing here as I did at the bottom. Shift, Alt, Alt, and right mouse click. And then Shift, Alt, right mouse click. So to get, I'll do that again just so that, okay, to I, I sh Shift and right mouse click to select that. And then I do, no, of course not. I do Alt to a alt right mouse click and then shift alt right mouse click to get that one and then again bridge edge loops so now we have this so if we look at this like this then that's what that looks like and of course I would like to have uh, you know my my wall inside here so I just select these two loops and then do bridge edge loops. And now we're here and we can see that this, you know, the, the, the subdivision surface modifier deforms this, so it doesn't look very neat. So press seven to look at this from the top. And I can do the control R again, and I can scale it in, but you can see that these corners here, they don't really scale that well. They, they lag a little bit behind. So I, press control tab and then vertices and select these four vertices and then I scale those in so I kind of get that and then I select the ring and then I can continue to scale it if I want it closer so if we look at that that's what that looks like so I would like to have another I'll do a, a control R here and then it puts that down there and I push I just lift my mouse up and it will just slide it nicely and you know if I'm satisfied with it I can take it further down it just depends on what kind of arc you want here so you can just slide that up and down the way you want it so we'll just do that repeat this again for the bottom and control R scale it in a little bit and then select these four vertices scale those individually in or together in here so we get an even ring or as even as it uh, I'm not sure I got it right quite right but we'll, I'll just leave it at that and there you go and and we're here and then we'll look at this through the camera and press F12 to render it and that's what we get. So this is another way of creating these sharp edges f for a, a mesh that you're using um, the sub subdivision surface modifier on and I would like just to you know why would I like to do that well if we 
uh, we just add a cube here, shift A, add this cube. We we'll put that right next to, and we we'll look through the camera, and then we render that. And you can see that this cube looks much more realistic because because it has an actual arc to its edges, and this is a this here has perfectly 90 degree edges, and that doesn't exist in reality. Nothing has, you know, a zero edge. Uh, there's always some some amount of curve on it. It could be very sharp, sharper than this one, but this is just not what the reality looks like. So that way you can get more real looking objects, even if they're not organic. So thank you for viewing. I hope you liked it. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and um, all that good stuff. And thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.